Hello dear pilots and thank you for being in another flight with me. I'm Lalo Mijares and yes, I know it's been a while since my last uploaded video to YouTube but I'm back. Uh, so are you ready to learn? Uh, today I'm flying this beautiful Saratoga 2 and uh, well, I don't want to go with you over the whole airplane because I don't have a, um, a too much time today. I have just uh, 53 miles um, up to the first fix of the arrival, probably a little bit more, but uh, I, I want to uh, go with you over the Aztec 55X Autopilot, which this Haradoga has. So come on over with me and let's learn how to use it. Aztec 55X Autopilot, which is this one, and uh, this is a control panel for the Autopilot. The pi Autopilot itself comes different versions for each aircraft, and uh, they are, there's uh, two other options for this Autopilot, which uh, this aircraft has. That, that's what I like to um, uh, to go over this Autopilot on, on this Saratoga, because uh, this is a control panel. And then we do have an auxiliary or, or an altitude pre-selector panel, and then we have an annunciator mode panel, right? So uh, we're going to go over how to operate the autopilot and the, all the tips that I can give you respect on how to operate it and uh, little tricks as well. First of all, let's go over the uh, autopilot control panel on which you would uh, be able to select what you want the aircraft to be flying in a lateral mode and a vertical mode. We have those two options. Well, whenever you hop uh, to the aircraft and you start running the engine and getting the radio master on, you will have also an autopilot master switch, which is a three position switch. The first position, which is in the middle, it's the flight director uh, mode master, autopilot master, which this will energize the autopilot, and you will see a couple of numbers that are gonna go down, downward, uh, right before it was the four, and uh, I, will, I will do it again, so that's an off. So whenever I put it on, you will see some numbers, that's the display, that's the test for the display, and there's a four, and it will run uh, going down, 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 and you will see a ready indication here. At that point, the autopilot is ready. There it is. It's ready to select a mode in order to use. But remember, this switch is pretty important. You have the flight director mode and the flight director autopilot mode. These will energize the autopilot and also the servos. So if you have the autopilot master switch in the flight director mode and you try to energize the autopilot, you will only have a flight director indication, okay? You won't be able to control the airplane. So let me show you. I have uh, selected the heading mode here and you will see that I can control the airplane and the airplane stays there, it won't go to any heading because I don't have the autopilot, uh, the flight director autopilot master on. But you want to see this, if I'm, I'm having the heading and I'm having a left heading, I'm going to hit the autopilot, uh, the flight director autopilot master on and see what happens. The airplane starts to turn. See, I'm doing a left turn to heading 310 approximately. See that? So right now the autopilot is on. So don't, I don't care about the modes, just I, I want to make sure that you understand what this switch does. Flight director, no servos. Flight director autopilot master on, flight director and servos. But, uh, but uh, I, want, I want to see, um, first of all, that during uh, the flight director mode, you, you, you will probably find 
uh, some aircraft that they don't they don't they don't have and uh, flight director okay so this one it does it does have a flight director I will show you in a bit and uh, some airplanes like the Cherokee 6 that I fly that probably have seen it it, it doesn't have a flight director on the um, attitude indicator so even though you have it on the flight director mode obviously the flight director won't appear on this aircraft if if will so that, that that's the main function of, of this one so let's go to the uh, flight director autopilot master on and i want to show you here on the mode control panel on the uh, autopilot mcp how to select the modes first of all you will have um, the screen divided on two let's let's do that so the first section is going to be the lateral mode selection and that's obviously um, how the aircraft is going to navigate right left or right in order to uh, maintain the course or a selected course that we want so for that we have the simplest mode we have the heading mode so for the heading mode i need to set up the bug here so i'm going to select that heading and the air, the autopilot is going to control uh, the uh, the column in order to keep that heading and navigate on the lateral mode however there is a vertical mode which is the second part of the screen that it, uh, we have divided so it's a little part the portion over here this autopilot has just two uh, vertical modes well actually three and the first one is the vertical speed well we'll say four vertical modes and I want to I want to put here for example uh, 300 feet a minute and that's a plus that's a climb so the airplane is gonna start a climb at 300 feet a minute okay so there it is 200 about 300 feet a minute perfect and then I can go down for example that it's gonna be 300 feet a minute on a descent so the airplane is gonna start descending okay sounds good but what about if I want to hold the altitude like right there I just need to go and press out so vertical speed goes away and altitude mode engages and the airplane is gonna level off and maintain that pressing altitude at which I press the altitude selector good so there is like a mix-up of these altitude vertical speed mode so let's say this is going to involve the um, altitude selector panel I'm not going to explain this yet I'm going to get to this later but let's say that uh, we want to climb to 6,000 feet so I'm going to select here um, let me do it this way so we can look 6,000 feet and then I'm going to press both the vertical speed and the altitude like this uh, let me uh, wait a second I need to do this a little bit okay so I gotta I gotta go and press altitude the vertical speed and then select for example 300 feet a minute and you see this trim indication is that the autopilot is uh, sending um, a sign out to the trim in order to move to move up or to move down so that's whenever you see these the trim is moving okay so right now we are climbing 300 feet a minute to capture an altitude okay so right now it's climbing to maintain 6,000 feet so whenever it reaches 6,000 feet the autopilot is gonna go away from the vertical speed mode there you go and it's gonna hold the altitude altitude at 6,000 feet pre-selected and there it is okay so that's how you control the airplane on the vertical mode mode it's pretty simple so just remember on the vertical speed mode the airplane it's gonna descend or climb but it's not gonna stop okay it's gonna go all the way to the ground it's gonna go all the way to the space okay so you gotta have both vertical speed and altitude to uh, descend and stop the descent on that selected altitude okay now for the uh, navigation mode we have the heading mode we talk about that I can select that with the heading bug and then we have the navigation 
uh, the navigation mode. So for example, I want to go to, to Retos here on the 341 course. And if you if you look here, I have the 341 course here on my navigation display. So if I hit the nav mode, uh, the airplane is going to start to turn regarding of uh, the heading bug to intercept this um, this course right here on the instrument. Okay. So um, uh, seven five Charlie Bravo is uh, what happened uh, with the uh, with the nav mode is that on this mode it's going to follow whatever source of navigation you have here so right now i do have the gps navigation source you see and if you change your course here the airplane is gonna try to intercept the course here so if it's wrong if it's not the 341 radio or the desired track course in here the airplane is gonna fly erratically. So whenever you have the GPS mode here, you need to match 341 with the 341 here. Now, let's select the Monterey uh, BOR 114.7. So there it is. And I'm gonna switch from GPS to BOR lock. There it is, so Monterey uh, we are on the radio 137. So, for that, uh, if you see here, what happened? I switched from a GPS mode or navigation source to a B-Log source. Look what happened to the autopilot. It, it started to blink because the autopilot now says, Hey, I don't know what happened. You're telling me to follow something. That, that I can't, so I, I can't do this for you. You tell me what to do. So the autopilot is no longer gonna do anything. It will, it will keep the wings level and that's it, okay? So, if we see here the radio 137, I'm gonna set up the radio here 317, like that. And look what happened to the autopilot. The autopilot is now receiving a valid navigation source which is right here, and it's it, it's telling me, hey, okay, I can intercept this now. So I'm gonna follow whatever it is, whatever is in here, okay? So good, there it is. Okay, remember always to have heading to course. Uh, now, there's another hidden mode here, which is the uh, GPS's mode. So I'm gonna hit twice the nav button. And, uh, but first of all, I need to have here the GPS uh, source selected. And then I can uh, click and you will see here GPSS, which is stands with Global Positioning sa uh, Satellite Steering. Okay? And what, what that does is that I have something here on the GPS. And it's telling me it's a 341 course. So regarding on the course that I select, see that the airplane is not turning, the airplane is going to follow to intercept whatever is in here. So the navigation source for the uh, autopilot is going to be this one, the GPS, not what whatever is here on the instrument. So you need to understand those two modes, the nav mode and the nav GPSS mode. Okay? Good. So we have those two modes. We're going to talk about the approach mode later. And uh, what I want to show you right now is the flight director. So the flight director is over here. Now it's showing up. And there is one condition for the flight director to appear. Well, there's two. One, the autopilot has to be energized. And two, you need to have Two modes selected. Well, actually, one lateral mode and one vertical mode. So let me disconnect the autopilot. You will hear an uh, audible tone, and the flight director is going to go. Okay. So if you see, I don't have any mode. But if I select the uh, GPSS mode, look at the flight director. It's not showing up there. Unless I select a vertical mode. So if, if, I, if I select the altitude mode here, like right there, the uh, flight director is going to show up, you see? So that's um, 
special condition for the flight director to show up. A vertical, a lateral mode and a vertical mode. Okay, sounds good. All right, we have talked about the um, autopilot mode control panel. You know now how to operate the lateral modes, the vertical modes, and the flight director as well, and how to turn on and check that the autopilot is ready with the autopilot flight director and flight director autopilot master switch. All right, now it's time to talk about the two other optional modules that are part of the STEC 55X autopilot. Okay, so let's talk about the mode control Oh, I'm sorry, the flight mode annunciator panel. So right now, we have a vertical mode, that's the altitude mode, which means we are keeping 4,500 feet. And we have a lateral mode, which is the heading mode, and those are annunciated here. So this is going to be a mirror of what we have over here, and that's to keep us... Uh, to, to let us know what is the autopilot doing uh, while we are flying with the main flight entrance. Okay, so that's it. I, I don't need to tell you more about whatever is showing up here. But this is uh, quite a little bit more complex. So right now, the um, uh, approach control has uh, cleared us to climb and maintain 5,000. So, Right here, we can pre-select an altitude and make the autopilot to climb to whatever we have this in here. So, in order to set up that altitude, we're going to need to enter the data mode. So, within the data mode, we can change uh, all the um, numbers that are possible to insert on, on this module, the altitude pre-selector module. So I'm going to start getting into that mode, so data mode, uh, you will know that we are on the data mode because enter is show up here. So that means we can enter the information to change there. So I can change here, like for, for example 6,000, 7,000 feet, and after the, the dot is uh, if, uh, the fan, the hundreds, I'm sorry, that's the thousands and this is the hundreds. How do you do that? You pull here, pull the knob, and then you turn it. You see that? So if I want to climb to 7,500, you pull, and then you uh, push to select the thousands. So right now, the approach control has cleared us to 5,000 feet. So I do um, select 5,000, push it all the way, and then exit the data mode. So I can check here the altitude select that I have, and also I can check the altitude, this is very important, at which the autopilot thinks we are. And this will need to match the altimeter. I'll show you how to correct that in a bit. So right now, I'm going to show you how to operate the autopilot. I'm going to select the vertical speed mode and altitude mode, and I'm going to select climb for about 500 feet, and let's say 300 feet a minute, okay? So that's it the airplane is going to start to climb. Now, I can select also here the vertical speed and in order not to go all the way here, I want to have it here, okay? We can do that. You need to push manual here. I'm sorry, vertical speed over here, not manual. And then it's going to be transferred. The uh, vertical speed mode is going to be here showed up but the value is going to be selected through here. So I'm going to select 300 feet a minute. So from 500 feet, it's going to go down to 300 feet a minute. And I'm going to have here all the modes. I'm going to have heading as a lateral mode, vertical speed selected as a vertical mode, and altitude as a standby vertical mode. Right? So look. This is a pretty useful mode. It's, um, it's going to be um, quite a little bit difficult to understand for you. It's not that logically, um, logically um, to manipulate, but it's it's it's, it's pretty. It's pretty uh, I, if you try to understand it, you will um, you will do it fast if you start to push the bottoms around.
So now you know how to select uh, an altitude. So right now we are at 5,000 feet. The uh, vertical mode is now an altitude. We're keeping the altitude right now and heading as a lateral mode. So that's a pre-select. Now, we can and we have to select or uh, adjust the parameter for the autopilot. So if we go to the, to the, um, to the altitude, this is the altitude select. So that means the altitude that we want to select for the autopilot to capture. But this is the altitude at which the autopilot thinks he is, okay? And there's a mode, which is here, the barrel. We need to go into the data mode and then press barometer. And you will see, initially you will see this. So probably you know that these are inches of mercury, right? This is scale. But I recommend you to put the um, autopilot correction on millibars, which is more precise and will give you better altitude in the autopilot. So usually you need, you would need to put whatever the value is here, but sometimes there's a trick. You need to match the altitude. For example, I'm, I'm going to go and set, uh, let's say, um, whatever the value is here, 10.08. So 10.08. And I'm going to exit the uh, data mode. And I'm going to check what altitude is my, aut is my autopilot thinking he is at. So I'm going to press Alt to show Alt. So he thinks he is at 5,100 feet. So I'm going to trick the autopilot in order for him to think that I'm at 5,000 feet, which is going to be the altitude that I want to be at. So I select data, barrel. If, if the barrel is on 12 inches, just hit it again, and you will go to middle bars mode. And I'm going to start reducing. Let's go over uh, just one inch. Uh, I'm sorry, one millibar. 1007. And I'm going to check. And that will fix at 5,000 feet. But probably it's going to be between 5,050 and 100. So let me go just one more. So I'm going to enter data, barometer, and I'm going to set up at 1006, right? So in that, in that um, correction, the autopilot still thinks that it's at 5,000 feet. So I'm going to leave, leave it like that. So I, I, I don't want you to, this to be uh, very difficult for you to understand. But this is like a trick in order to make the autopilot capture the correct altitude. Okay? Good. So, uh, we have talked about the barometer setting, we have talked about the altitude select, the current altitude for the autopilot. Now let's go with the alert button. The alert is just going to show here. It's either on or off. That's it. This is the altitude alert mode. It will sound 1,000 feet before capturing the altitude, and it's going to sound again 300 feet before or after the capture altitude. So if I start to climb and go over 300 feet, the altitude alert is going to sound. It's like a chime, like a ding, dong, you're going to hear that, okay? So that's, that's the other mode that you can select through this little panel. I'm going to leave it on. And the last one is the decision guide, which if you press it, it's going to alert you at the decision guide that you set. So let's go over monitor chart, which uh, I have somewhere here. I have the, um, let's say, the ILS runway to zero. And let's see what are those minimums. Hey, come on. There you go. So those minimums are, I, I want to have the decision altitude, not the decision height. So that's it. So category one, uh, full ILS components working, it's going to be 1,652. So I'm going to set up that decision right here. In order for that, remember, you need to go to the data mode and then press decision height. And then you can set that. I'm going to set 1,000, which is that, and then 600. 1,600 feet must, might probably be not that accurate, that accurate. So if I want to get a little bit more room in my 
approach, I want to select probably, oops, I'm sorry, so 1,700 feet, okay? And then I uh, reset that button, and then I can either uh, go back to altitude select or either go out of the uh, data mode, and I will have that decision height uh, beeping at the value I set up, which is going to be 1,700 feet, okay? So, uh, what what you're going to do with he, with this button is just activating that. So that means ring, that means, that means silence, okay? So I'm going to leave it on, I'm going to leave the altitude alert, I have the altitude selector, and I have the altitude that my autopilot thinks he is at, okay? So that's it. See, it's not that much difficult to understand. Just remember how to enter the data mode and how to change all the information here and also that uh, you can go either vertical speed here or if you click it again well actually you need to click here and then you turn the knob oh you just go here manual you click manual and it returns to here you see so that's, that's what manual is for you click vertical speed, uh, speed here and you disappear you, you, you revert you send the vertical speed control back to the uh, autopilot main control panel. That's it. So this is the 55X autopilot. And uh, the last mode that we are missing is the approach mode. I'm gonna show it to you in a bit because we are approaching the Monterey Del Norte International Airport shortly. So there's uh, the arrival. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna prepare for the uh, ILS. Let's uh, select the approach. ILS number three with Duke Sam load yes and I'm gonna select the frequencies which is 110.7 and out of the flight plan mode uh, the flight plan page I'm sorry so that's it good so the approach is set the decision height is set the uh, approach course is gonna be set uh, manually well actually I'm ca I, I can put it on here because I'm receiving vectors right now so 207 208 there it is perfect and that's it so the approach is loaded everything is set up in order to shoot the approach and I will show you how to use the autopilot for that well it is also very important that you can recognize when the autopilot disconnects yes it can happen and you need to be prepared for that okay so right now we have the auto autopilot operating we have a flight director here, we have the autopilot master on, and we're descending on the vertical speed mode at four, uh, 500 feet a minute until 4,000 feet. So, if for some reason the autopilot disconnect, you will hear a sound. I'm gonna use the autopilot master disconnect, which is this button. This button um, is used for two things, the autopilot disconnect and the trim interrupt switch. If the trim runs away, that means that the uh, the trim keeps turning and turning and turning for whatever reason. You will use this button to uh, stop the trim to turn. Okay, so that is one function. Now I'm gonna press it, and I want you to hear the autopilot disconnect tone. Okay, so that's the autopilot disconnect tone. All the modes are gonna go off and the airplane is going to be red. So I'm going to reset the heading and altitude vertical speed mode, 400 feet to 4,000, okay? You heard that? That's the altitude alert. Okay, so in order for the autopilot audible tone to go away, you need to press that button again. So there's the tone, click it again, and it will go away. Now, I'm going to set the autopilot again, so another, uh, another thing that you can use in order to silence the autopilot is just leave it, uh, leave it press. Okay, so I'm going to leave it press and you will hear that the autopilot audible tone would just sound like one second and will go away. You see that? So those are the two um, options in order to silence the autopilot. So one click or just leave it pressed. Okay? Perfect! You are becoming an expert on how to use the SX-55X autopilot. So we have covered so far 
how to operate the multi-trail panel, how to operate the altitude pre-select panel, and how to understand the uh, flight mode on here panel. So those are the three main components um, to operate, operate and to see the modes on the autopilot. Now, for last, we're going to uh, understand the approach mode, which is a little bit more complex in the uh, lateral, which, is, which uses as well lateral and vertical modes. Okay, so right now I am flying to the final approach. Well, this is the intermediate fix. And then I'm going to turn left into the final approach fix. Okay? So I'm going to. Recibido 3500, intercepte localizador y está autorizado a la aproximación. Recibido 3500, 2450, rumbo localizador y autorizado a la aproximación, 7 golpe hotel. Ok, so the approach control just cleared me to 3500 feet. So I'm going to set the altitude there. I'm going to uh, select vertical speed mode and altitude. I'm going to start reducing the power a little bit more, like around 20 uh, inches. There it is. And I am going to keep that heading uh, probably around 260 in order to insert that, intercept that final approach uh, course. Okay, you heard that? That's the altitude alert. It's going to sound 300 feet above your pre-selected altitude, which is 3,500 feet. Okay, so uh, when the uh, autopilot reaches that altitude, it will go to the altitude mode. Okay, good. So, um, I'm going to select the last, or the final approach display, which is that one. All right. Okay, so right now the autopilot is uh, leveling off. You see that? Uh, let me select this one. There it is. Okay. And you, know, you see that for some reason it stopped 100 feet above. Okay, you can quickly uh, correct that. By using this button, okay? So I'm gonna, if you turn left, you're, you're gonna descend. So I'm good. One click is 20 feet. So I'm 100 feet off, it's gonna be five clicks to the left. One, two, three, four, five. And look, the autopilot will descend 100 feet because one click is 20 feet in order to correct. So that way you don't have to click again vertical speed or reset the autopilot here. See? That's a very nice uh, tip. Okay, so I'm intersecting the localizer. Sorry, I, I was a little bit distracted with that tip. So let me just, uh, I'm gonna do it manually because uh, I wanna show you how to do uh, the autopilot thing. And there you go. Otherwise, I won't be able to do it. All uh, right, there it is. So I'm gonna set a heading mode and uh, an altitude mode. Actually, I'm gonna go over to 500 feet to 3,000 feet, which is uh, the altitude pre-selected for that. So there it is. Okay, sounds good. So right now I'm on a heading uh, to intercept the localizer. Imagine that. And it's heading to 3,000. And I'm going to select the heading approach mode. Okay, like that. So with that, whenever the localizer comes in, it will center. And I'm going to select the altitude mode here to, to keep that altitude. And right now, the nav, the, nav, uh, the, uh, the autopilot is following the approach, that's the localizer. And with these, whenever the glide slope hits here on the center, it's going to go over the glide slope mode, which is right now. Here. Okay? Give me just a second. Gracias. Con la Torre Norte, yo sé, se siete Golf Hotel. So, uh, right now I'm going to lower the gear, okay, and uh, landing, lights, fuel pump on, the fuel tank is uh, correct, major full reach, that stays there, good. So right now the airplane is configured, it's uh, on the correct configuration, uh, following the glide slope, following the localizer, it's capturing that localizer, right, so, and also following the glide slope, that's the last vertical mode. Let me call the tower because they will get mad. Torre Norte, ¿qué tal? Saratoga 117 Golf Hotel, la aproximación ILS Pista 20.
So that way you can see how. So right now you can look how the autopilot is following the localizer and the glide slope itself over here. You see that? And I show you how to use the heading mode to intercept the localizer and then hitting the altitude in order to uh, have that glide slope and the altitude modes um, well actually the glide slope in standby the altitude in active mode and whenever the glide slope comes centered the glide slope is going to arm and will be fallow like right now to the runway you see so we're established on the localizer we're established on the glide slope we're following the flight director and there's the runway all oh, right good and I'm going to be preparing for landing shortly. Right now, I am approaching to the decision height. There that it is. And final I approach. heard the tone. The autopilot advised that I was approaching to the decision height. Like a ding dong. Okay. So right now here, the autopilot is off. I don't have any modes right here. And I'm going to prepare for landing. Awesome. A little bit of crossing correction to the Siete Golf Hotel Vía Eco Plataforma General Revisión. Tenga buenas tardes. Muchas gracias. Buenas tardes, Richard Eco Plataforma Siete Golf Hotel. Okay, so fuel pump off. You don't want the uh, the um, engine to run rough. And we go prop full, make sure lean, and the pump is off, lights, strobe lights off, landing lights off, wick, axle light on, and that's it. Okay, well, you guys, thank you for watching this video about the Aztec 55X autopilot on how to control it, how to understand all the functions. I know that you are now an expert pilot on how to use it because we talk about all the functions you you watch um, on how to do a climb, how to do a descent, how to shoot an approach, how to use every mode. So you need to be an expert on how to use the autopilot with this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. I'm Lalo Mijares. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and on my YouTube channel. See you next time and happy landing.